The Ravens better not even think about it. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Ain Raven here with another video. And boy, um, Ravens Twitter was buzzing this morning, going crazy. And, and I was trying to figure out why, but it didn't take long to see what was going on. I, I saw some screenshots from an article uh, about the possibility of Ravens thinking about trading Lamar Jackson. I was like, oh, OK, I, this is probably going to be from somebody like Deadspin or, uh, you know, how Bleacher Report or BR Gridiron Report. They be putting out these scenarios, these possible scenarios that they be thinking about, but they don't have any like validity to them. So I was like, I, yeah, it's, it's probably whatever. But then I saw where the report came from and it came from Russell Street Report. And I was like, oh, well, now we got to have a conversation. So um, in the report, which will be linked uh, in the description of this video, if you want to check it out for yourself. Uh, in the report, they talked about Anthony Levine and his retirement. Uh, they talked about Ben Roethlisberger and his retirement. Uh, they also talked about um, Mike McDonald and him being hired. And they talked about some stuff that we said, too, about. What was the point in, in doing all these other interviews if you knew that was your guy? Were they a waste of time? And so on and so forth. But the part that has a lot of Ravens fans going crazy right now is when they spoke about one Lamar Jackson in the Ravens front office. And you know what? Without wasting any more time, let's just dive straight into it. So it said last week, the reliable Barstool Banks insinuated in an article that the Ravens have some things going on behind the scenes that would make your head spin. He wasn't specific, and I'm beginning to understand why. So before we get into that, um, you need to we need a reference. Uh, you need to be referenced on what article they're referring to. Uh, Barstool Banks, he put out an article uh, when Wink got fired. And basically, the article was saying that he was blindsided and a lot of Ravens fans and Ravens people were blindsided and did not see that coming. Wink getting fired. And you know what? Let's just read uh, a snippet of that article so you can see what he's talking about. This is from the Barstool Banks article that Russell Street Report is referring to. He said, that's what makes this firing so bizarre. If anyone was going to be on the hot seat, it was going to be Greg Roman. Uh, I'm not stuck on getting rid of him, but there's a huge faction of the fan base that wants his head. I would have bet my life it'd be him over Wink. So weird. Maybe something will come out indicating something behind the scenes has been brewing for a while. I can already tell you right now there's a lot of other stuff under the surface completely unrelated to Wink that may or may not surface this offseason. Stuff that would make your head spin. My hope is that this is the worst to come and we can put the pieces together to run it back with a healthy roster next season. F fingers crossed on that. But be warned, this may just be the tip of the iceberg of things that could happen in Baltimore this offseason. So with that article, there was a lot of just cryptic with it. Um, there was no direct message. There was nothing that was straightforward with that. It, he just said there may be a, a lot worse stuff, a lot more crazier stuff that will make your head spin that could happen uh, more, way more than Wink being fired. And for me, that had my head spinning like crazy. I was like, whoa, because I, I did not see that coming at all. But something that could possibly wor be worse than that or be crazier than that, it would take a lot for something crazier than that to, to happen to make your head spin. But at the same time, some people may wonder, who is Barstool Banks? Barstool Banks, he does have credibility. Now, I'm not a fan when people or reporters, they say, I don't like the I know something that you don't know. I, I'm not a big fan of that. I, I just do not like it. But um, with him, he does have credibility. He has broken several things before they have actually happened. So I would take his word for it. I still don't like that whole method. Oh, I know something you don't know. But. With him, we know that he does know something that a lot of us don't know. But back to the Russell Street Report article. So he said, since Barstool Banks post on Barstool, I've had a few things shared with me that at this point I'll file under educated speculation and that the center of much of it is Lamar Jackson. 
Lamar has been nothing short of a breath of fresh air since his arrival in Baltimore. He's been an outstanding player, great teammate, selfless and accountable, but some things don't add up, including Lamar's late season regression, the lack of any contractual movement, and despite the criticisms, the decision to retain Greg Roman as the team's offensive coordinator. So, as far as his regression, um, well, late in his like late, late last his season, because his season didn't even be a full season, but his last couple of games, yeah, it, it was rough. It was rough for Lamar, and it it threw a lot of us off because we just were not used to it, especially like that 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 four interception game. <coughs> excuse me, against the uh, the Browns, it was just like whoa. Even though the Ravens still won, it was like whoa, what is going on? What's it? some of the throws and just um, it was just weird to see it. Now, we knew he would eventually snap out of it. That that wasn't a, a long-term worry for me and for a lot of us at all. But it was just weird seeing this sort of the, the, this this slump. And with uh, if you actually look at the numbers, though, um, well, minus that four interception game, but even including that, um, if you look at the numbers, well, this is why numbers don't tell the whole story, but the slump numbers-wise actually wasn't as bad as a lot of people made it out to be. But anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. Uh, it said, back to the article, he said, rumors have recently surfaced that the Ravens, number one, may consider a potential trade for Lamar. And number two, that some of his off-field behaviors may have contributed to the former MVP's disappointing 2021. So obviously the first part, the trade for Lamar Jackson, we're we going to talk about that. But for number two, some of his off-field behaviors, what? Like, for... Anyway, uh, but they are just that, rumors. So I get why Banks was measured in his recent article. That said, the Lamar contract situation deserves close attention. Any unusual developments could be signs that there is merit to the educated speculation. So um, a lot of people have wondered, what is up with Lamar Jackson's contract? Why has he not been signed to the big money yet? He is clearly des deserving of it. Uh, Josh Allen, he got his money. And at the time when Josh Allen was signed... Lamar Jackson has accomplished just as much as maybe even more than Josh Allen. So why? And, and we know that Lamar means so much to this Ravens team. Uh, I, look at the record with and without Lamar. It's clear as day. Why has Lamar Jackson not signed his deal yet? Now, um, this is why I always say do not be dismissive of fans opinions on different matters because fans bring a lot of stuff uh, to your attention that you may not see or that we may not see. So don't be dismissive of what fans have to say. There's been a lot of fans that when it's come to the Ravens media team, they've been feeling like, oh man, like that, like their media team has almost been leading us down this road to kind of let us know like, hey, <laughs> this contract ain't getting done. Of course, uh, Mink had his comments on the, uh, the Lounge podcast where he said he feels like Lamar Jackson should be one of the top paid quarterbacks, but it should be incentive based. And a lot of people didn't agree with that. I don't, I don't agree with that, but everybody has their own opinion and that's fine. But there had also been just a lot of pushing, pushing of, of Giro. Like, hey, Giro's here. Giro's good. Giro's offense was one of the top offenses in the league this year. Despite all the injuries, Giro this, Giro that. They've been pushing Giro heavy, especially right after the, right, right after the season ended. It was like, huh. Um, so with that being said, it just it just seemed like they were kind of letting us know some stuff without letting us know some stuff. But that's not here nor there. There were some pe uh, some other people that pointed out that with Lamar Jackson, somebody noticed that ever since the Miami game that he had not been in any Ravens memorabilia. No, no Ravens hoodies, no Ravens jackets, none of that stuff. And I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and then there was somebody else uh, who mentioned that everything ain't so ain't so sweet <laughs> between Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens right now. But hey, maybe they're just rumors. But with all this stuff coming out, I don't know, man. I, I, I cannot just be so dismissive. Uh, of those things that people notice and that a lot of fans noticed. Uh, and even when you look at Lamar's body language, especially since that Miami game, a lot of times he looks dejected. He looks like he's removed from the game. He just doesn't look like 
he is really into it like that. Especially in that Miami game. And you you just saw you you just see the the, the, the frustration. And you you hear him like in the in the presser that he had last time. Um you, he says all the right things, but you see how he says some of the stuff, and it's like, ah, we, we see through that, Lamar. We we know you because we've seen you in your experience with this whole PR stuff. We've seen the times when you vouch for somebody, or somebody's your boy, somebody who you love, and the way you talk about them, like the way he talks about Hollywood, the way you talk about Mark Andrews, like, oh, yeah, yeah, you, you love those guys. Those are your boys. Those are your playmakers day in, day out. But then the way that he talked about Greg Roman, I was like, oh, um, well, I don't get into that. That's, that's for them upstairs to handle. But anyway, um, with the contract, that, that's been another thing. Like, w w what's going on with it? W w what's the deal? There was, of course, the rumor that Quadri Ishmael put out that the Ravens offer Lamar Jackson big money. He didn't say how much money. He didn't say that what the guarantees were, the length of the contract, none of it. But he just said the Ravens offer Lamar Jackson big money, and he turned it down. So why would he turn it down? I wonder. Because, again, we don't, know, we don't know any of the details of any of that stuff. We would have to ask Quadri Ishmael. But if they offered him big money... Was it big money in regards to the other quarterbacks that have gotten paid? Was it top five money? Was it top three money? How much bread was he offered? How many years was he offered? What was the guarantee for the money that he was offered? And does he feel like, hey, you know what? If he did turn it down, does he feel like, you know what? No, let me go, let me go do this thing the right way. Because that's something that I've been saying. I said that with Lamar Jackson... And we said this a while back, but we said, well, Lamar Jackson for the Ravens, it would be smart of them to sign him right now to a long term. It would be so smart of them to sign him right away. If they're going to sign him, you got to do it right now for their sake. It would be smart in their sake because he's coming off of this season where he had a down season, even though the wins weren't down. <laughs> when he went out, they went down. But when he when he was in, the wins weren't down. The wins was so again. That's how you know Lamar, this dude is so valuable to these Baltimore Ravens. Because even in a down season for him, even in a slump season for him, they were still winning. Still winning. <laughs> but when he went out, oh, that winning stopped. That winning came to a bloody halt. And that was it. So Lamar Jackson's value is through the roof. But anyway, it would be important or smart of the Ravens to sign him right now while his value is at its lowest, even though his value is still crazy high. Because the Ravens could get him for a cheaper deal than if he goes back out there next year and shows out. If he goes back out there next year and is back to himself. If he goes back out there next year and is... Healthy. If he goes back out there next year and you all, you all actually provide an offensive line for him, then in that case, price would be back going up. And even with Lamar Jackson, like we always say, every single game that passes by every single week, the price keeps going up, keeps going up. So it's only going to get higher from this point moving forward for the Ravens to sign Lamar. It's only going to get that much tougher. But if he turned it down, I wouldn't be mad at that because in the long run, that would be smarter for him. Because he, he getting his 22, 23 mil this year. That's guaranteed. He's getting that. Because that's the fifth year option. But after that, this is his chance to prove himself. He goes out there and gets back to the Lamar Jackson that we all know. Ooh, <laughs> that's going to be a lot of money. It's going to be a whole lot of money. Mm, mm, mm. But anyway, um, back to the article and some, some very good points that were made, uh, which kind of makes everything, all of these rumors make it seem like, uh, I don't know, are they really just rumors? Anyway, he said, uh, <coughs> excuse me, perhaps. Uh, the Ravens brass 
only has themselves to blame for this because according to the NFL media access policy, listen to this part because this is something that we've been talking about on here for a long time too. Every team is required to, number one, make players available for interviews the day after the season ends. And number two, hold a news conference during the week following the end of its season with its head coach and or chief executive and or club president and or general manager. The purpose is to serve fan interest in the conclusion of the team season. So I didn't even know that this was a rule. Like we've been asking, wondering, talking about when are the Ravens going to talk? Because they've been so quiet. And some people have been like, oh, no, 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 no. They, they don't do those end of the year presses. They don't do those anymore. It don't matter. It ain't got to be no state of the Ravens presser, but something got to give. And I did not know that it was actual NFL media access policy. So these are the rules, my friend. And y'all are breaking them. But silence, like, like, like they say in the movies, silence is golden. And that's true. It is. Because as Ravens will continue to be so quiet, we all knew something was brewing. Didn't know what it was and didn't see the wink thing coming at all. But we knew something had to be going on with the Ravens. And then all of a sudden, the, the first move that they make, we signed Ben Mason to a future reserve deal. Well, actually, before that, they signed Nate McCrary and um, uh, the cornerback, uh, Kevon, um, uh, I can't think of his last name right now, number 38. I cannot think of his last name. But they signed him and uh, Nate McCray to future deals. And then they signed Ben Mason. It's like, all right, there you go. There you go, Ravens fans. We gave you all a little something. Nah, that, mm, that wasn't enough. Then that same day that they announced that they signed Ben Mason to a future deal, oh, Wink is out. It's like, whoa. Oh, okay. Wow. But anyway, um, he said, as for number one, Number one, uh, this is back to the article again. He said, as for number one, and number one being making the players available for interviews the day after the season ends, he said uh, they, they did that. So they took care of number one. But as far as number two, uh, where they are supposed to hold a news conference during the week following the end of the season with the head coach or chief executive or club president or general manager, we, he said, we're all still waiting. 18 days later and counting. And yes, we have all been waiting. And we, we finally, 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 last night, they finally let it be known that they're going to talk to the media on, I think, John Harbaugh's on Monday, Mike McDonald's on Tuesday, and then Eric DaCosta said, oh, no, give me a couple days, because maybe, who knows what we're going to hear, what's going to go down. He said, give me a couple days, because I'm talking on Friday. So they spread it out for Eric DaCosta. But anyway, uh, we'll see how... That goes, because that should be very interesting. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I do if, if the Ravens are even thinking about this, because you got to know, like, it's business. Ra Ravens, as a, in a business, you have to think of every single option. You have to think about every single scenario both good and bad. You have to think about the possibilities of everything. But this is one of those scenarios. Ooh, it would be very, very bad for the Ravens if, if, if this did come to fruition. And the Ravens better do their absolute best to try to keep a lid on this. They better do their absolute best because if anything gets out, and I mean, this is a little bit getting out, but if anything concrete gets out that the Ravens are trying to trade them, oh boy, oh boy, it's, it, it'll get ugly and it'll get ugly fast, fast. I guarantee you. Oh man, don't even want to think about it. But again, whatever Ravens plans are, oh <laughs> y'all better not but if you're old they, oh, they, they better not man uh because just imagine like imagine if this whole thing is true what do you do if you're lamar if you you know or you hear about oh my team oh they trying to trade me they trying to get rid of me after all oh after all that oh after all that, oh my goodness. 
Imagine that. Like, think. Think about you at your own job. Think about if you, you put in these, these four years at your job and then you had an unfortunate circumstance happen where you, uh, you end up having to take some time off for work. But it was nothing that was in your control. Uh, you end up having to take some time off for work and your job was like, you, you were very valuable to your job. And they do so, they do 20 times better when you're working than when you're not working. But then you hear about they, they might be thinking about trying to, to fire you. You like, what? How? Ooh, that's why I said, if this is true, it, it can get very ugly very fast. So Ravens better keep this one tight. They, they better keep whatever they got going on. They better keep it tight because. <sighs> oh, man. Just just thinking about it. Just thinking about Lamar Jackson. Thinking about, uh, oh, man, just the locker room. Oh, boy. <sighs> oh, man. We're going to see, though, y'all. We're going to see. One way to quiet all this noise up would be if Lamar Jackson got signed to a contract extension. But who knows? It? Will that even happen this year? I don't think so. And I've said that already. I don't see him signing a contract extension this year. But also, I didn't see John, John Harbaugh getting a contract extension this year. I didn't see that at all. Um, but with Lamar, uh, if he's not signed to a contract extension this season, this offseason, this, like, since this article is out there, it's going to be on people's minds. And now, like, check this. Ravens fans, they already been watching. They, they watch everything so carefully. Ravens fans are, again, that's why I say you cannot be dismissive of fans and their opinions and stuff that they see and stuff that they notice. Ravens fans are very smart. They are very smart and they see this stuff. They see patterns. They see habits. They see body language. They see that stuff. They can read between the lines. There's those cold words that they'll use in the media and coaching will use and stuff. Players will use. Ravens fans see that stuff. And they like, oh, ooh, I know what that really means. They, they not, fans are not stupid. But now, with this being put out there, fans are going to be on extra watch. They're going to be looking at stuff extra close now. Because they, they, see, they see something's off and something's been off. And be, way before this article even came out, people been saying that. They been saying that that stuff has been off. That's old news for a lot of people. But this article and these rumors and whatnot, that would just make a lot of stuff make sense for people as to why stuff has been off. But we'll see. Anything that happens, you already know what time it is. Ravens? <laughs> Don't play with fire. Not saying that you are, but don't play with fire. I'm out.